So we're going to be talking about the evaluation and the questions to ask when doing an infinite transtibial socket, the measurements to take, and everything to do before casting. Uh, as you can see here, the patient is in an appropriately sized liner. When the liner is on, we can check for tissue density. If the tissue is soft and the muscles are atrophied, then that tissue density is soft. If the tissue is regular muscle density, that is medium. And if the patient is extremely bony or has very firm musculature, then that falls under firm. On the limb, we should mark the edges of the patella, the medial, uh, the mid patellar tendon, the fibular head, anterior tibia, as well as the borders of the tibia, the distal end of the tibia, the medial tibial plateau for medial tibial um, load bearing, the femoral condyles, and proximal to the condyles for compression. For the sensitivity and how much we, they require loading, this both has to do with asking the patient and your evaluation of the patient. They are each scaled from 1 to 10 on the evaluation form. Next are the circumference measurements. In case of a pin lock, we need to take circumferences from the mid patellar tendon down every two and a half centimeters. In case this is a suction socket, we need to take the same measurements and specify where the proximal seal is and the distal seal is for the suction liner. Before starting, it would be good to mark where we are taking the measurements so that they transfer onto the cast. Make sure the tape measure is, is tense enough to maintain the level consistent. Um, but do not, do not tension the tape measure more than needed as to compress the soft tissue. With the patient relaxed, we place this on the mid patellar tendon and then we place the end at the end of the umbrella with slight compression and this should give us the height, the length of the limb that we need. And then we need the ML dimension at mid patella, the proximal ML dimension compressed proximal to the femoral condyles, and then the AP compression at the mid patellar tendon, and we'd need that measurement compressed. We need to cast, at the very least, proximal to the condyles. We always recommend starting with a layer of elastic plaster. You can choose to cast with fiberglass. That's okay too. Your cast does not need to be overly snug and just layering the plaster is enough. No compression is applied during the elastic or the rigid while wrapping the limb. Once the limb is wrapped, have your patient relax the knee and make sure you're pushing against the mid patellar tendon and providing opposing force posteriorly. As the plaster is setting, make sure to apply medial tibial plateau pressure to emphasize the shape and to better capture the location of the medial tibial plateau in case any of the marks moved. Also, if you need high trim lines, which go over the femoral condyles, make sure to compress on the lateral side and keep the wall flat and compress medially to create an indentation over the medial femoral condyle. Once everything is done and set, make sure to write your name on the cast, but also on the cast, mark true anterior, mark the adduction angle or abduction angle, as well as the lateral flexion angle by bisecting the femur and bisecting the tibia.